Microsoft Flight Simulator. Beautiful volumetric clouds, jaw-droppingly good and highly detailed photorealistic terrain, and these undulating hills that just seem to work so seamlessly. Pretty much got everything we need, except for one thing. A replay camera so that we can capture this absolutely wonderful tranquility. So I hope you don't mind the little showcase that I put at the beginning of this video. I just wanted to highlight some of the things that you can do with this piece of software. Flight Control Replay from Fabio was created basically to fill a void that Microsoft Flight Simulator has where it does not yet currently have a fully operational flight replay camera. Now technically there is one that you can get access to if you go through the developer suite but A, it's not very good, and B, it 100% does not work within the Microsoft Flight Simulator Top Gun Challenges. You'll notice that even the top menu is missing when you're playing uh, one of the challenges, and I presume it's so that you don't cheat, but that just highlights the fact that it's been coded rather poorly. If you can't record something without the possibility of cheating, then uh, there's definitely a problem there. And I'll be honest with you, it is possible to cheat using Fabio's flight control replay. I could have done it myself, but I chose not to because I'm not a cheat. But it is possible to cheat and get very high scores all the way across Microsoft Flight Simulator. What I've shown you today about flight control replay is just a mere snippet of what this actual fantastic bit of software can do. But it is incredibly difficult to capture footage 
especially in the Microsoft Flight Simulator Top Gun uh, DLC scenarios, because Microsoft Flight Simulator becomes incredibly unstable. It will crash very often. It will force uh, Flight Control Replay to crash quite often. Sometimes when it's recording, it doesn't actually gather the footage. There are times where uh, some of the camera transitions are very, very bad. There'll be huge amounts of flicker and loads of problems and so on and so forth. Now, that might be something down to my PC. Maybe I, maybe during the recording I had a stutter, and that's where the stutters in the video recording come from. So Fabio uh, sent me a copy of Flight Control Replay right at the beginning when Microsoft Flight Simulator, when Microsoft Flight Simulator first came out. And hand on heart, um, I was very impressed with what he had produced back then. But it wasn't very stable. It wasn't very good. It wasn't really good enough to be a suitable uh, replacement for a, a replay camera in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I think it is. It has progressed very far. We're now on version 4.5 something or other, and it's a vastly better, stutter-free, really smooth, really very, very excellent piece of software. And it works incredibly well in most situations. But Fabio has been very keen, and he's been asking me all week to try and get a tutorial out uh, explaining how to use um, Flight Control Replay in Microsoft Flight Simulator for the Top Gun DLC uh, for this weekend. And I explained to him at the time that um, I'm transitioning from one sim rig to another. None of my sim flight stuff is set up. And he was, just please try and get it done for this weekend. So I have tried to get it done for this weekend. And that snippet that you saw earlier, it's only a couple of minutes long. It took me an entire day to record the footage and uh, edit it and get it all into a working piece. A couple of reasons for that. There's a few stutters and camera issues, um, as mentioned. And also, um, because my sim rig wasn't set up properly, I have absolutely no audio in any of the recordings I took for four or five hours I was recording. Not one piece of footage has audio. So all the audio you heard in that two-minute snippet has been completely fabricated, which is a real shame because the audio footage captured in-game was way better than what I've been able to produce. So apologies for the shoddy quality of this video. I'm trying to rush it through on equipment that is not yet finished or set up or ready to run, and it's caused a lot of problems. And it may well have contributed to the stability problems that I'm experiencing in-game. So, to the tutorial, there's a few, few things I need to tell you. When you start recording, it's very, very important. That's how unstable Microsoft Flight Simulator is uh, when you're trying to record with this. Once you do it the right way, it's very stable and you rec can record for hours at a time. When you start the recording is very, very important. It must be after you've loaded the scenario and before you've started the flight. So there's a small section there where this window appears. That's when you must start the recording. If you do it before, you'll end up with a black screen. Not always, but sometimes. If you do it after, you'll end up with a crash. Not always, but sometimes. The only way that you can get a really solid, stable system is to run it in the middle. Now, Flight Control Replay recommends that you run it in administrator mode. During my testing today, I took it out of administrator mode, and that seemed to help with the stability as well. I'm not 100% sure if that is actually part and parcel of the fix, but maybe play around with that yourself and give me some feedback in the comments. That would be really helpful for me and for anyone else who's trying to get footage of the uh, Top Gun. DLC. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you can, put um, FCR on a second monitor, so it's not on the same monitor that you're recording on uh, or flying on. Again, I'm not 100% sure that that's going to really definitely help you, but these are the things I did, and they got me to a point where I could actually record. I have had Microsoft Flight Simulator crash on me so many times today, it's ridiculous. And every time it crashes, I have to start again. And the whole loading process can take five to ten minutes. And I even tried it in safe mode um, after crash number five or six. That didn't help at all. So you've really got to sort of start the recording at the right time. In addition to that, there's a lot of things I've got to tell you. In addition to that, you need to set up a recording location and just record something generic. Just go to any basic uh, flight and take off record and 
uh, stop the recording and just make sure that it's created a file there. What you don't want to do is have to name a file in order to record it. It needs to be automated because um, when the flying starts, if you click on um, uh, FCR at all, <clears throat> it can really cause some crashes. So the less you click on it, the better. Once you get it working, uh, the better it is. Additionally, if you're trying to record a run, um, if you interact with FCR at all, it will cancel the run and you'll have to reload the scenario. So avoid doing that. Just restart. Don't stop the recording and start again. I know that's frustrating. There are some features. I'm going to put a review out soon for FCR. There are some features I think need to be added to that software, but I'll, I'll speak to Fabio about that and um, I'll put my review together and put those suggestions in there and we'll see what, what we can do to improve things for the software program. But that's for another video. Once you've got your recording in place, there are certain things that you will need to do. You'll need to set up a controller, is my recommendation, in order to take control of the camera, the drone camera, and be able to switch and move and increase and slow down um, everything in order to get the best kind of footage you can. Um, I'll quickly go through the tutorial for that. I'm going to record it after recording this, so if my voice sounds different, that's why. Once the recording is done, um, just sort of check and make sure uh, that none of the cameras you use, the camera transitions, um, cause any issues because there are multiple times where that can happen. Uh, each time you run a replay, uh, you will probably experience different clouds, uh, different people online if you're showing other players online and then name tags will be different because although it's the exact same recording of what you've just done, the actual environment in which you're recording will be slightly different because it's sort of live weather. You can change that. You can set it so it loads the exact same weather and conditions um, that, that you were running before. You could even turn it to night, which gives you a lot of control and uh, variety to proceedings. Um, but in addition to that, uh, there's a there's a lot that could be done with the recording software, which is not going to be part of this tutorial, that's going to be for something completely different. That's another video in it in its entirety. It's already taken me a, a full day to record this, so I'm not going to record anything else. Um, I'm just trying to rush this through for Fabio, but at the same time, give it at least a decent bit of polish so that you can really see the benefits of this software. So yeah, Fabio sent me this. Um, Fabio sent me FCR a long time ago. And he hasn't been pressurizing me at all to put a review out. And I didn't want to put a review out early on because I felt that I would have to be honest about the problems that I experienced in the software. Um, but now it's evolved so much, it's now very viable, very good, very decent. This is the extremity of what this software is capable of doing. Um, for normal flights, I think this is going to be fantastic. I'm going to integrate it far more into my flights and... Um, do my very best to utilize the wonderful transitions and camera controls, etc., that you can have with this software in tow. In addition to that, um, I think it's very possible that you could run it on the same screen and with um, administrator on, as long as you start the recording at the correct time. Once you have the recording, you can go through and change cameras within the software itself, which is really awesome. Um, again, I think a tweak, a really beneficial tweak would be when you change the camera, you should see it at the moment you change it because then you can look at it and decide whether it's a good angle for that current moment in time. Um, I also feel like we need to have more options in terms of removing cameras. I think there should be a remove all one thing I'd really like, because of the instability of Microsoft Flight Simulator and having to record such long videos in order to get the footage that you want, um, it would be really great if we could say there's there's an option to start from a specific point, um, but I haven't really got that to work the way I think it should work. What would be excellent is if we could cut that at that point and delete everything that comes before it. So we've just got the three minutes at the end where we did a good... Uh, we did a good run and we want to use that footage. It would save so much time and effort and heartache uh, for all of us if that could be added. But unfortunately, that's not available right now. 
So you're going to have to come into the settings with Microsoft Xbox controller of your choosing. And uh, my recommendation is to just delete everything, start again, because the default Microsoft controller configuration setup, in my opinion, is absolutely abysmal. And it's certainly no good for camera control. If you're not going to fly with an Xbox controller, you just want to use it for the drone camera, it can actually be very, very good indeed. So these are the configurations I use. The left thumbstick runs the Z axis. That's forward and backwards. So moving towards and away from the aircraft. Do not reverse the axes because it's already in there backwards. Same with the up and down. Um, so uh, vertical, uh, up and down movement. That goes on the right thumbstick, on the up and down on the right thumbstick. And that is um, also needs to be not reversed. In addition to that, I put a 20 degree dead zone on the right thumbstick. That's because I have the pan and tilt. Sorry, not tilt. The, um, the yaw movement is on the right thumbstick, left and right. And what I don't want when I'm turning uh, the camera quickly, like doing a fly past or something, I don't want the uh, camera to suddenly shoot 30 foot up into the air. So I put a massive dead zone on that just to reduce that from happening. The D-pad I find is excellent for increasing and decreasing the speed, uh, transition forward and backwards, left and right, and also the pan, the rotation speed. That's all on the D-pad. That works really well. The Y key enables me to disconnect from the aircraft. So um, when it's on and you pan around the, the aircraft, it will continue to look at the aircraft. It won't move away from the aircraft. It will stay with it. But as soon as you hit that button, the aircraft will take off and you're free to roam and go wherever you want, which is great for doing those fly past camera shots. In addition to that, I use the A button to return to that point. I think it's called drone reset distance or something like that. So I press that button and that takes me back to the aircraft, which is really good when I'm trying to do a couple of fly past uh, and I just want to get catch up with the aircraft, jump in front of it and uh, move on. Now, every time you do this, you're going to need to pause the uh, camera. You do this by clicking play again on the uh, flight control replay interface. Personally, I think it would be much, much better if when it was paused, the icon turned into a pause button and when it was playing, it stayed as a play button because that's caught me out quite a few times. But that's just a minor thing. In addition to that, you're going to need to have a switch to drone camera or toggle drone camera. I put that on the uh, select button and on the menu button i allow the transition between a uh, cockpit cam and external cam because sometimes the external cameras are actually very good for capturing a few things especially when uh, the ability to stay with the aircraft when it's rotating that's something that flight control replay doesn't have in the arsenal having said that you can set up your own personal camera views and switch to those like you can any other kind of camera view so any camera view that you set up will work, um, and that's something I'm going to cover more in my full tut in my full tutorial. But it's not really relevant for this particular tutorial. But now you should have all the tools that you need in order to capture the footage that you want. And I would be so grateful if you could give me a thumbs up and uh, hit that like button. Give me a thumbs up, and in the comment section, not only leave me a comment, but I would absolutely love it. If you could make a video and then post the link to your YouTube channel, well, ideally to your video, uh, so that I can see what wonderful creations you guys have come up with and any ideas or suggestions that you have that could help me and anyone else who's interested in trying to get fantastic footage in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I would be so grateful if you would leave your suggestions and recommendations in the comment section below. And a big thank you to Fabio, um, who has worked tirelessly on making this software as good as it is today and it is very good uh, now and i'm so impressed with it that I'm, I'm happy to showcase it on my channel and congrats to fabio i hope uh, you get lots of purchases off the back of this and i hope the quality of this video is good enough for you mate it's the best i could do in such short amount of notice and hopefully um it's going to help somebody out there or lots of people hopefully thanks for watching see you in the next one take care